Hi guys, welcome to another YouTube video. With more people than ever getting into the world of lure fishing these days in the UK, I've decided to run through some of the popular techniques and give you my take on when, where, how and why to fish them. So today, we're going to run through how to tie and fish the Texas rig. So, first of all, to tie the Texas rig, you will need some fluorocarbon and some braid scissors, some offset hooks, some bullet weights and your chosen soft plastics. You can fish most styles of soft plastic on a Texas rig, be it worms, shads, but my personal favourites are creature baits. First of all, take yourself a length of fluorocarbon. I prefer a length of around four foot. That way, if I decide to change lure size and therefore hook size, I don't have to change leader every time. To tie the Palomar knot, simply take your leader and your hook, thread your leader through the eye of the hook once, and then thread it back through the same side it came from, forming a loop on one side of the hook, leaving your tag end and the rest of your leader on the other side, like so. Now take that loop and tie an overhand knot with your leader and the tag end, like so. Now take the hook, pass it through that loop, and pull that loop over the overhand knot Moisten it and then cinch it together. And there you have your hook tied on. Trim off the tag end. It couldn't be simpler. So the next step is to rig up your soft plastic. To do this, simply take your lure and your offset hook, push the point through and nick on a small bit of the lure. Thread it up the shank and position it on the top piece of the hook, like so. Now you're gonna to wanna to measure where that hook comes out. As you can see on the Fox Rage Critters, the point of the hook comes out right at the top of the groove. I'm using a size 1 -0 here. Take that point and go through the body of the lure, bringing it out at the top of that point, at the top of that groove, sorry. And there you have perfectly rigged, soft plastic, and an offset hook. The final step would be to take the end of your leader, like so, thread on your bullet weight so that the wide end is facing the hook, pull it through, and there you have the Texas rig, ready to go. So that's how to tie the Texas rig. Now there's a couple of things to think about before we go out on the bank and fish it. The first of those being the size of your hook in comparison to your soft plastic. Now personally, when it comes to soft plastics, I like to use the maximum size hook I can get away with without impeding the action of the lure. That gives me a nice big bend for that hook to push down onto when I set the hook, freeing up the point and giving me the largest amount of gape to set that hook. So with the Fox Rage Critter here, the seven centimeter version, I'm using a 1.0 and that fits perfectly at the top of that groove there that's been specifically created for offset hooks without impeding the action of those claws. So that's a good thing to think about when, when you're tying on different lures. Are you impeding the action of the lure? And is there enough bend of the, of the uh, hook there for that lure to push down, freeing up the point and then setting the hook? So the second thing to think about when fishing the Texas rig is the weight of your bullet weight. Now personally, I like to fish the rig on a still water, be it a canal or a lake, or even slacks on a river, so I don't need much weight to counteract the flow. Um, so I can fish it quite light, and I like to give it, especially at this time of the year, a nice slow flutter to the bottom, as although they're separate, that, the weight and the lure itself, that weight will cause momentum, dragging that lure down to the bottom quicker if you're using a heavier weight than it would if you were using a lighter weight. So I like to fish as light as possible, especially in these cold months, so I can get that nice slow flutter of a presentation, which can often buy more bites. Another thing to think about with the weight of the bullet weight is the size of your lure. Now I'm fishing the seven centimeter critter here, but if I were to use the nine centimeter lure, I might need more weight to get that lure down there and to, to activate the, uh, the claws so that the claws flutter. Or if I was using a, a paddle tail, you need more weight to get that lure to kick, sending off vibrations and yeah, attracting the fish. So yeah, I think that's everything. Let's go out and give it a fish.
So here we are out on a local stretch of canal and we're going to run through how I'd fish the Texas rig. First of all, I'm going to run through my rod choice. I've got with me today my Fox Rage Terminator twitching jig and that's rated between 3 and 14 grams. The reason I've opted for a slightly heavier rod than say a conventional ultralight setup is so that I've got enough backbone, enough stiffness in that tip to really set those hooks home. When you're fishing with offset hooks, you've got to remember the, uh, the hook point is buried in the soft plastic. So you're going to want a rod that when you set the hook, you're really driving that hook point home and you're not missing, missing hook sets and losing potentially a decent fish. So that's the rod choice. Let's go and look at how to fish it. So, first of all, you're going to want to cast the lure out. As it hits the deck, I like to follow it down, staying in touch with it the whole time, as you can get bites straight away. Then, after it's hit the bottom, just twitch it up again, follow it back down, twitch it up again, follow it back down slightly with the rod tip. And that gives you enough leverage, if you get a bite, to set the hook. If you're fishing it on too high of a rod tip, you haven't really got that distance behind you to, or across your body to strike into the fish. Another thing to remember is that that bullet weight is going to sink before you lure. So you want to give it a little bit more time when your lures hit the bottom for that lure, that lure to slowly flutter to the bottom. You may want to give an extra bit of a pause. If, you, if you're in fishing in tough conditions like it is today, it's cold, it's bright. You might want to give them a little bit extra time to look at that lure. Another thing that's important to mention is the choice of weight of bullet weight. I've opted for a 1.8 gram here today, and that's because I'm fishing a canal with relatively, that's relatively shallow, and I want a nice, slow falling presentation, a bit of finesse to my approach. It's the middle of winter, as I said before, it's bright, it's cold, and those fish aren't really active. So I want to leave the lure in their faces as long as I can, really. So that means adding slow pauses and, as I mentioned, fishing really light to allow that lure to slowly flutter to the bottom and give them a lot of time to watch it and hopefully induce a take. So just bear in mind your choice of, choice of weight. Another advantage of fishing the Texas rig on canals is a lot of them have silty bottoms so by fishing the lure separate to the weight rather than fishing a jig head, should I say, you're allowing that lure to slowly flutter after the weight has sunk and sit above that silt, kind of like you were fishing a chod for carp, for those of you that fish for carp out there. So another thing to think about when fishing the Texas rig, or more specifically fishing crayfish imitations on a Texas rig, is mimicking the behavior of that crayfish. Having watched crayfish underwater in a defensive position, I've noticed that they like to, they use that tail and propel themselves backwards in a hopping motion. So I like to mimic that in my retrieve just by hopping it and then pausing, hopping it and then pausing. And often you'll get a take on that pause after hopping the bait back quite, quite erratically. And for me, mimicking the prey fishes or prey's natural behaviour is really important and it can buy you a few bites. Another distinct advantage to the Texas rig is with that weight being separate to the hook, if you find that the fish are really shy biting, they only have to inhale the weight of that soft plastic, whereas if you were fishing a conventional jig head, the fish has to inhale the weight of the, not only the soft plastic, but the jig head too. So on tough days, that can make a real difference and can buy you a few bites. So that's my take on how to tie and fish the Texas rig. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll try and get some more content like this up soon. If you've got any questions, just leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Until next time, tight lines.